We have with us today, inshallah, Surah Qaf, one of the most amazing surahs in the Quran. The surah is a Makki surah, so it's revealed very early on in the Makkan period. But three amazing hadith have been reported about this surah. Number one is that the Prophet used to recite this surah in every Jum'ah until it was reported that some of the Sahaba memorized the surah from the recitation of the Prophet in Jum'ah itself. So instead of giving a khutbah, he would just simply stand on the member and simply recite this surah, that's it. Number two, the second hadith that's been reported is that the Prophet used to recite this surah in his Fajr prayer, in the first rak'ah itself. And this is why uh, the, the stronger opinion is that uh, this is one of the first of the surahs that the Prophet would love to recite with uh, in his Fajr prayer rather than other surahs. The third thing, the third hadith that's been reported, which is authentic, is that for Eid Salah, he would love to recite this. So can you imagine, for Jummah prayer, for Fajr prayer, and then for Eid Salah again, the Prophet would like to recite this. On top of this, the Jummah khutbah itself, the Prophet would actually recite this surah instead of doing anything else. So can you imagine therefore the value of the surah and how important it is for us. In fact, the whole purpose of this surah is to awaken those people who are overlooking the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon themselves. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the generally merciful ar-Rahim, meaning the one who is specifically merciful to believers in this dunya and in the, and in the day of judgment, qaf. Qaf is one of the mystical words of the Qur'an. Uh, multiple statements are said about what it means and the stronger opinion as Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he mentions after mentioning 15 opinions about what it means he says a stronger opinion is that Qaf refers back to the Quran Wal Quran al Majid and by the Quran that is Majid the one that has high status and lofty elevation over others meaning this Quran that has lofty status over all other books that has been revealed before it Bal Ajibu meaning even though this Qur'an is so lofty and it is quite obvious for every, anyone to see that this is so lofty, Bal Ajibu, they are surprised. Anja'ahum Mundirum Minhum, that a warner has come from them. Faqal al Kafirun, so the disbelievers say, Hada Shayun Ajib. This is a strange thing. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions strange twice. He says, Ajibu, and then he ends of that sentence by saying, Ajib. Meaning, they are in utter amazement. They cannot fathom one God. And that we're going to be brought back to, to, to life again? This is just ajeeb, shayun ajeeb. Aida mitna wa kunna turaban. If we were to die and we become dust, dhalika rajun ba'id. That is a very distant hope, meaning it's not going to ever happen. That's just impossible. Qad alimna ma tanqusul ardu minhum. Meaning we are most aware of what the earth will eat up from their bodies when they die and where it will be eaten up and how much will be left behind. And that is very, very clear to me. وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيدٌ And we have a book that is hafid, meaning protected. Protected meaning two ways. Protected meaning the knowledge in it is protected from the shayateen. And it is all the knowledge itself is protected within it. بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ Rather they have disbelieved in the truth when the truth has come to them. فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ marij. So they are in a very confused issue. They are totally confused about this point. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Have they not looked at the heavens? فَوْقَهُمْ Above them, كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا How we have built them. وَزَيَّنَّاهَا And we have put beautiful things inside them, meaning the beautiful stars and the planets in them. وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ And there is no furuj, meaning there is no simple escape or no hole at all from which anyone can try to escape through the, through the sky except that he has to go through it. Meaning here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws the attention of these people who are so amazed that really you are ghafileen. Have you not seen the signs of Allah already around you? From them is a sky that has no deficiencies in it. madadnaha, And the earth, we have spread it wide. وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا We have thrown in it. Alqa is to throw things into it. What did he throw? Rawasiya means mountains. وَأَمْبَتْنَا فِيهَا And we caused there to grow from therein. مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَهِيج From every single species. A bahij meaning uh, a, a, a beautiful type of plantation and crop. Tabasiratan meaning a beautiful eyesight. How beautiful it is, how much of an eye candy it is. Tabasiratan wa dhikra and a reminder. Likulli abdim munib. For every single slave of Allah, 
who is munib, the one whose heart turns to Allah in two things. Number one is repentance. Number two is acknowledgement of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ And we sent down from the heavens مَاءً Water Mubarakan Blessed water فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ And so we sent through it جَنَّاتٍ Meaning gardens وَحَبَّ الْحَصِيدِ And lots of beautiful harvested seeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how He has planted so much beautiful gardens and caused therein to be harvested the most amazing crops and plantations. From the crops and plantations Allah is referring to are the grain, the granary crops like the rice and like the wheat and like the barley, like the corn. One nakhal and also the date palms that I sent down. Basiqatin laha outstretched and widespread. Laha tal'un nadid. Upon it are fruits that are layered upon top of each other. Just like mangoes or bananas, for example, is a better example. When you have layers upon layers upon layers of bananas on top of each other, and when the grapes come out, they're beautifully layered together in bunches. So in the same way, Allah is talking not only about how Allah has pr produced the fruit, but how He has produced it in the most amazing fashion, form, beautifully layered on top of each other. Rizqan lil ibad as a provision for the slaves. Wa bihi, and in the same way, we have caused there to give life to baldatamayta to the earth that is dead. Kadalik al khuruj. In the same way will be the resurrection. Meaning the same way as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through a little bit of rain will give life to the earth that has nothing on it. Right? Suddenly rain falls and before you know it, the desert has become green. Where did it become green? Where did all that greenery come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it life in the same way Allah will cause a resurrection. In the authentic hadith in Bukhari, it is narrated that, the, that Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that on the day of judgment, Allah will resurrect the creation by causing a rain to fall. From that, people will spring out of their graves and come out on the day of resurrection. Before them, meaning before the Quraysh, the following people disbelieved. Who were the disbelievers? The people of Nuh disbelieved. Ashabu Ras. People of Ras wa Thamud. And the people of Thamud also disbelieved. The people of Nuh, and they were in the Mediterranean area. Wa Ashabu Ras. Some of the scholars said Ashabu Ras were the people in Yemen. Uh, or the Ashab al Aika or Qawm al Shu'aib, who are the people in uh, Jordan. But the stronger opinion is Ashab al Ras. Ras means well. So the people of the well. The scholars of Islam of Tafsir mention that in one of the towns, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent a prophet by the name of Hanzala. This prophet of God used to encourage them to be truthful to Allah azza wa jal and to be charitable and to worship only one God. But what happened was, these people, they tied up Hanzala's hands, they tied up his legs, then they threw Hanzala into the well. Then they chucked into the well stones, and then they filled up the well with sand until Hanzala totally died from being buried under the well, under the water, and of course under the pressure of the rocks and the sand. SubhanAllah. This is how these people behave with their Prophet. Can you imagine, SubhanAllah, I mean, you know, you think about it, like how could you behave like this with a man of God? These were the Ashaburas, the people of the well, were Thamud, and the people of Thamud, and there were a people who uh, Salih والسلام, was sent to him, and they were in Jordan, and Ad were the people of Yemen. To them, of course, uh, Hud was sent to Ad, Wa'adu uh, wa Fir'aun, and then Fir'aun, of course, the people of Fir'aun, we know the story of Fir'aun very well, Wa Ikhwanu Lut, and the brothers of Lut, والسلام, the filth that they did and the kufr that they had is well known. Wa ashabul aika, a widespread low tree, refers back to a specific group of the people of Qawm al Shu'aib that used to live it live in the city called Madian, which is in Jordan. Uh, and Ashabul Aika were the people who used to have lots of trees and they were merchants. And also they used to teach cheat the, the poor amongst them. Wa ashabul aikati wa qawmu tubba. Qawmu tubba were the people of greater Yemen. To the southern parts of Yemen and the kings of Yemen were called Tubba. So the, the kings of uh, Persia were called Kisra, the kings of Rome were called Caesars as you know, the kings of Egypt were called uh, Fir'auns and the kings of Yemen who were non-Muslims at that time were called Tubba. Scholars said why were they called Tubba? They were called Tubba because as soon as one of them would die the next one would claim uh, rulership straight away 
without any delay. So the people of Tubba, they also disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullun kathab rusul All of them disbelief in their messenger. Fahaqqa wa'id. So their punishment became real. Meaning, it became true and, ob and obligatory upon them. Afa'ina bil khalqil awwal. Are we tired from the first creation? Do you think that we are tired and we have lost our patience with the first creation? Rather, these people are confused about the second creation that will happen, which is the Day of Judgment. Now, Akhwani, we move on to page number two. This is where the surah becomes extremely powerful. Verily, it is we who have created mankind. And we know what his soul whispers to himself or herself. Allah's knowledge is so perfect. He is that much aware of every single whispering of that to yourself. And we are closer to it, meaning to the human being, from his jugular vein. That over here, Allah is referring to the we over here does not refer to Allah. Because Allah is not close to uh, Fir'aun, not close to Shaitan, not close to Iblis. Allah is close to Rasulullah close to the Mu'mineen, believers, close to the Mursaleen, close to the Anbiya, close to the Musalleen, close to the Salihin. But He is not close to the people who are sinners, right? Rather, it is the angels of God are closer to it than the jugular vein. Meaning, the angels that are around us are sitting closer to us than our jugular vein. They are closer to us, to the soul that is inside our bodies, then even the jugular vein that we have that is closer to us in our necks. Meaning the angels are actually closer to us than we can imagine they are sitting here somewhere. إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ When they reach him or uh, when they meet him, the interchanging meeting angels are those angels that come in the morning at Fajr time. So as soon as the Adhan happens, the angels come down, right? This is why, Ikhwani, you should try to make sure as soon as Adhan is given, You've already got wudu and you pray Allahu Akbar and you go into your sunnah prayers. Why? Because the second angels are going up there at that time. And Allah will ask them, how have you left my slave? And they will say, we left your slave Pray. So it's very important that you don't delay. Also the asr. The asr prayer is the second time that they interchange. So the interchanging is, is at fajr, interchanging is at asr. So Allah says, وَإِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ And when the interchangeal, interchanging angels meet, Anil Yamini wa Anil Shimal, sitting on the right and on the left, Qa'id, sitting attentively, very patiently, looking at everything that you do. Ma yalfidhu min qawlin, he cannot say a single word, he cannot even raise his eyes. Illa ladayhi, except that he is with them, meaning with these slaves of, of Allah. Raqibun, attentively looking at every single thing that he does. Atid, meaning fully prepared to write down. So the angels are totally ready at every moment of time. Not one word can escape except that they write it down. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ And when the, the throngs of death come in truth, meaning the shaking of death as the soul is about to leave and the body jerks, that is the سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ So when the jer jerking of the body happens at the moment of death, ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْ حُتَحِيدٍ That is what you were completely ghafil about. That is what you were forgetful and unaware about. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And when the, when the horn has been blown into, what is the horn? The horn that Israfil carries, which Israfil will blow into, and when he blows into three times, the first time everyone will be afraid and completely, uh, completely mesmerized and petrified. With the second blowing, everything of this dunya is, is destroyed. The third blowing, everything is recreated again. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ and the first blowing has taken place. ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ That is the day of wa'id, the day of warning. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ On that day, every single soul will come. مَعَهَا With it, سَائِق A driving angel. Every soul, every human being will come with a driver. وَشَهِيد And a witnessing angel. Uh, the scholars of Tafsir mentioned that the sa'iq will be sitting on the backs. So there'll be an angel as soon as a person comes out of the grave, the angel will jump on his back and he will tie himself to him, making the guy go forward rather than go back. Wa shaheed and a witnessing angel. This is the witnessing angel that will be hovering in the sky and he will have 
the books with us and he will be witnessing either for us or against us and saying remember what you did remember on this day and is reminding you every single thing that you did the witnessing angel laqad kunta fi ghaflatin again allah talks about ghafla can you see how this surah is all about those people who are ghafil we are totally unaware of the reality of what's around us totally unaware of death because you know there is no hisab at, at, at all in this dunya the hisab is in all in the akhirah and as a result we are so ghafil about it laqad kunta fi ghaflatin you were definitely unaware you were totally unaware from this truth fakashafna anka ghita'ak so today we've removed the barrier that was that was covering your eyes fabasaruka alyawma hadid so today your eyesight is very very sharp meaning ikhwani the angels are around us but we can't see them so when we die that barrier will be removed and we'll be able to see the unseen world that is around us that we cannot imagine and see right now wa qala qarinuhu so allah has come and when allah has come and the name has been said ya muhammad bin abdullah come forward as soon as he comes forward the angels that used to write down the book of deeds in this dunya will come forward this is the qarin qarin in this surah will mean two things the first time the word qarin is used will mean the angels and the second time the word qarin is used will mean the devils so in this verse allah subhanahu says wa qala qarinuhu and his qarin meaning the angel that used to write down his deeds will come on that day with all the books that he wrote down and he will thump it in front of allah so allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa qala qarinuhu and his angel will say hada ma ladayya atid oh allah this is everything that he has done ma ladayya with me atid very prepared i'm completely prepared ready to show you what he has done in this dunya so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge him and say alqiya fi jahannam give a command after he has judged everyone the hadith states allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get so angry he has never been this angry before he will never ever be this angry ever again so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a spate of anger will say alqiya fi jahannam kull kafar anid throw into jahannam every single disbelieving arrogant slave of mine manna illil khair the one who prevents people from doing good mu'tadid the one who transgressed the limits murib the doubtful person and doubts about islam and about my prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do we stop people from good don't let that sheikh speak because you know he is uh, not shafi or for example brothers you know wife wants to wear the hijab say no no honey don't wear the hijab parents in the audience for example your kids want to have become practicing have a beard for example no no don't manna illil khair the one who stops people from doing good deeds alladhi ja'ala ma'a Allah ilahan akhar the one who put another deity as partners with Allah fa alqiyahu fil adhab shadid meaning oh both of the angels throw him in the terrible torment of jahannam qala qarinuhu now this is the second time Allah says his qarin his partner so ikhwani we all have two partners partners in good they are the angels and partners in evil and that is the devil that is around us qala qarinuhu so his qarin who is his devil who will be in in jahannam with him will say qala qarinuhu rabbana o our lord ma atghaytuhu i never caused him to become misguided walakin kana fi dalalin ba'id however he himself was in manifest error this is very important verse ya khwani this verse says that the devils and devils on the day of judgment will free themselves of any involvement with us they will say that we ourselves caused ourselves to be misguided and is this true the next verse allah will say allah accepts that argument meaning that the only reason the shayateen misguide us is because we ourselves are not sincere worshipers of allah qala la takhtasimu so allah will say to both of them the human being and his devil will argue with each other in jahannam saying was you who made me do it so allah azza wa jalla will say to them qala la takhtasimu ladayya do not argue in front of me wa qad qaddamtu ilaykum bil wa'id i have already given you my warning beforehand ma yubaddalu al qawlu ladayya the words will never be changed with me meaning what i say will never be changed the fact that whoever dies in disbelief will reside in jahannam forever whoever dies with a sin 
is, li is liable for punishment in Jahannam. Ma yubaddalu al-qawlu ladayya. My words will never be changed. Wa ma ana bi dhallamin lil abid. Nor am I ever a transgressor to my slaves. They get what they deserved. Yawma naqulu li Jahannam. On that day, we will call out to Jahannam. Halim talati. O Jahannam, are you full? Look at the words of Allah. Have you had enough? So Jahannam will say, Hal mim mazid. Is there any more? Wa uzlifatil Jannah. And Jannah will be brought close together. Lil muttaqina. For the believing people. Ghayra ba'id. Not far away. Hada ma tu'adun. This is what you have been promised. Li kulli awwabin hafid. For every single awwab, meaning those who turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Awwab is the one who does the one who turns back to Allah in repentance. Hafid, the one who is protecting over himself from sinning. Man khashiya rahman those who fear ar-Rahman. Bil ghaybi, in secret. Wa jaa bi qalbim munib, and they come with a munib heart, an acknowledging of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The recipe of entering Jannah, the one who is repentant to Allah, Hafith protecting him, safeguarding himself against sinning. Man khashya rahman, those who have fear of Allah, bil ghaybi in secret. Because it's easy to fear Allah in public, but it's difficult to fear Allah in secret. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, the believer has two statuses in his heart. Number one is that he thinks that he, he himself is bankrupt. The second status, Ibn Qayyim says, is at the same time as thinking that you're totally bankrupt in front of Allah, that you consider Allah to be so amazing and so great, so full of wisdom, so full of blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where is Allah and where am I? And this is why Allah wants us to beg Allah as if we are beggars in front of Him. Udukhuluha bi salam. Enter into this, this Jannah in peace. Dhalika yawmul khulud. That is the day of khulud. Khulud meaning eternal life. Lahum ma yasha. For them is whatever they ask for. Fiha waladayna mazid. And with us is something more. The scholars of Tafsir said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, What is something more? It is that we will get to see Allah. Meaning they're not expecting it. They're so uh, bewildered by the beauty in front of them and the beauty of life in Jannah that they're not even expecting. And then Allah will tell them, Oh people of Jannah, are you happy? Saying, yes, Ya Allah, we're happy. Is there anything else that you want? What else could we want, Ya Allah, when you've given us every single thing that we could ever ask for? This hadith is authentic in Bukhari. And then at that point, Allah will say, But ladayya mazid, I have something more for you. What is it, O oh Allah? So at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the veil that is protecting himself from creation and we will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our eyes. And so the Prophet said, he said, they have not been given anything more pleasurable than looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنْ And how many are the towns that we have destroyed before them, meaning before Quraysh? Hum ashaddu minhum batasha. They are more severe in strength. Fanaqabu fil bilad. So so travel in the land. Can you find any signs of them at all? In nafi dalika. Verily in this la dikra is a reminder. Liman kana lahu qalbun for those who have a heart, meaning a mind, attentive mind. Wa alqa sama and he has put an attentive ear. Wa huwa shahid and he is witnessing with his eyes. So. Anyone who has a heart to ponder on, ears to hear by, eyes to see with, then let him go and see all of these creations of how they were destroyed and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left any signs at all of them. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا We are the ones who created the heavens and the earth and that which is in between. فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ In six days. وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبِ And no tiredness or drowsiness or weakness ever touched us because of it. Opposite to what the Jews and Christians say, that Allah took a rest on the seventh day, right? Fasbir ala ma yaqulun. So be patient, O Muhammad sallallahu with what they say. Wasabbih bihamdi rabbik. After you have sabr, what is it that you are meant to do in order to come close to Allah? Fasabbih bihamdik. Meaning say, glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah. Qabla tulu'i shamsi. Before the sun rises up, meaning right after fajr, 
after you pray fajr keep on making dua and dhikr of allah azawajal until the sun rises qabla tulu' ash-shamsi wa qabla al-ghurub and before the sun sets meaning right after asr an hour before sunset do your dhikrs of the evening in the authentic hadith it is reported listen to this hadith is amazing the prophet sallallahu said that anyone who prays in the masjid then sits in the masjid making dhikr until the sun rises then after the sun rises a little bit about 10 minutes or so after sun rises prays to raka then he goes back home with the reward of hajj and umrah together then he said complete 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 full reward of hajj and umrah total wa min al and in the depths of the night fasabbihu then praise him wa adbar as sujood so after salah praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well wastami' yawma yunadi al munadi min makan qareeb and keep attentively listening for the day when the munadi when the caller will call out from a place nearby and this refers to jibril alayhi salatu wassalam when he will come on the day of judgment allah will recreate him and the rain will fall and jibril will come the munadi here is jibril so jibril will say oh people come out of your graves so everyone who is far away or nearby will be able to hear him clearly yawma yasma'una sayhata bil haqq on that day when they hear the terrible torment in truth dhalika yawmul khuruj that is the day of resurrection in verily we nahnu nuhi we are the ones who give life wa numitu and we give death wa ilayna al masir and to us is your return yawma tashaqqaqu al ardu anhum sira'a on that day when the earth will break meaning as the hands are coming out of the graves they will come out quickly they'll jump out of their graves dhalika hashrun that is the day of resurrection alayna yaseer it is very easy for us to enact it nahnu a'lamu bima yaqulun we know very well what they say o muhammad sallam wa ma anta alayhim bi jabbar and you're not someone who forces them to do anything you can only guide them and advise them fadhkir bil qur'an so guide with this quran may yakhaf wa'id whoever yakhaf fears the wa'id the warning and it is for this reason because of this last verse the rasul sallallahu would simply recite this surah in his khutbas jazakumullah khair ikhwani assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh